Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So this video is gonna be a little different than my normal videos so far, so please be kind. It's gonna be a little bit less scripty and more of a casual conversation between you and I. I've had uh, some requests to talk about this particular topic, um, especially if you've clicked on this video, you'll know that this is for the new developer out there. And I figure having been in the industry now for many years, there are a few things that I can share, especially for those of you who are just getting into the field. Um, hopefully some of this information will be valuable to you. Now this video is aimed at the beginner. So if you're looking to get into web development for the very first time, or even if you're just a few years into your career, hopefully you'll find this video useful. So since I specialize in web development, that's what the theme of this video is gonna be about. Uh, but if you are specializing in other aspects of software engineering, like game development, etc., I'm pretty sure you're going to find these tips helpful to you as well. So you might be wondering, who am I? Well, I, I started my career back in 2012, at least professionally speaking. That's when I got my first professional job. Uh, however, I did start off freelancing early on, sometime around 2008. That's kind of a, its story in and of itself. So all in all, I've been writing code for the web for just about 15 years now. Yeah, I feel old. I have experience in both front-end and back-end development, and in my most recent positions, I've been working as a lead back-end developer, which is what I currently do. All right, so tip number one, learn the language first, not the framework. So I'm going to use JavaScript as the example here. There are many frameworks and libraries out there for front-end development, for example, Angular, React, and so on. And each framework or library has their own way of doing things. So for example, Angular is more of a Swiss army knife and takes care of all aspects of developing single page applications. Whereas something like React is more of a library, more specifically a view library that allows you to create reusable components and sort of build up the front end of your application. React is normally paired with something like Redux to manage state in a predictable unidirectional pattern. If you have no idea what I just said, that's fine because I'm trying to get at something more important here. Though each of these tools are different, they all have one thing in common. All of their source code is written in JavaScript. I'll say that again. All of their source code is written in JavaScript. If you want to be a well-rounded developer, it's extremely important to understand the underlying language that your tools are built on. Though each framework might be great at doing certain things, all of these tools don't solve all of the problems. And a lot of the times you'll need to understand JavaScript itself in order to understand how these frameworks actually work under the hood, what quirks they have. Within each tool, you'll still have to write JavaScript to fill in the gaps and solve complex problems. So while a framework provides a blueprint on how you should architect your code, within that blueprint, within that framework, you're still gonna have to write JavaScript and you're still gonna un have to understand how JavaScript really works under the hood. So when I say understanding JavaScript, things like variable hoisting, prototypical inheritance, execution context, function scope, by understanding how JavaScript works fundamentally under the hood, you'll be able to leverage that knowledge and not only work with just the framework or library you're currently using, you'll have the foundation to work with any framework or any library and leverage that knowledge to solve complex problems when the tool you're using doesn't already solve it. And also importantly, understand the quirks and idiosyncrasies of the tool that you're currently using. Once you start understanding the language itself, you'll effectively and inevitably become a more well-rounded and knowledgeable developer. Tip number two, the programming language is not the most important thing. This might be ironic coming from tip number one, but it's true. Now, I'm not saying that learning a programming language isn't important, it is. Writing code is part of the job. But working as a software developer encompasses more than just understanding how a programming language works. As a junior developer and as someone new to entering the field, Yes, a large part of your job will be writing code, fixing bugs, and maybe contributing to small features on your team. But as you level up, 
in your career, you're going to find that the programming language itself, the frameworks, the libraries that you're using, all of these things are just a means to an end. It's a tool that you're going to use to get the job done. In development meetings, people will rarely talk about how to write the code itself in the programming language that you're using or what syntax to use. Rather, they're going to be talking about complex problems that the business, the company that you're working for is trying to solve. And it'll be your job as a developer, as a more experienced developer, to understand how that discussion ultimately translates to implementation when you're participating in that meeting. Of course, you're going to be working with other developers and pairing with them, for example, and writing code, but understanding how the programming language works will just be another part of your job. Instead, I would argue it's very, very important to understand how to write good, clean and maintainable code because all of that stuff is agnostic to the programming language you're using. For example, dry, don't repeat yourself, is agnostic to any language you use. It doesn't really matter if you're using Ruby, TypeScript, Perl, Fortran. I don't know if there are Fortran developers still out there. Another better example of this is Solid. Solid is an extremely important part of software development, especially as you level up in your career. It's one thing to work by yourself solo on a project that you own and you only contribute to because the code that you write will be understandable to you. And it doesn't need to be understandable or maintained by anyone else. But as soon as you start working in the field, and as soon as you start working with other developers, one of the most important things that you can understand is writing good, clean and maintainable code using language agnostic principles like solid. All of this is important because all of these things are standards and practices that teams need to implement in order to effectively get work done. Outside of that, software development is more than just writing code in a text editor. There are a lot of things that come along with the job. For example, analyzing user needs, project planning and estimation, understanding agile and scrum methodologies, liaising with people outside of the development team and explaining technical concepts to non-technical people. I'm not saying that you're going to be doing all of these things every single day or expected to be an expert in all of these things, but I just want to make you aware that it is part of the job and it is something you'll be expected to know more and more of as you mature as a developer. Tip number three, there isn't a defined path to becoming a developer. You do you. It's really important to understand that there isn't a predefined path to becoming a software engineer or web developer. Yes, there are developers who have traditional computer science degrees, but there are others like myself who are largely self-taught. I have a university degree but it's not in computer science. It's in something called media arts. Others are even transitioning from other fields outside of development, people who work in finance, construction, etc. Others may have started as designers. Others took boot camps and others may have watched a bunch of Udemy videos and Treehouse videos and made a bunch of projects and uploaded them to GitHub. There are so many ways to get into development. I've seen videos on YouTube where people tell you what programming language you need to learn first and what steps you need to take to get into development. No, you need to learn what you find interesting and what you want to do with your career. Yes, if you're a front end developer, for example, you're going to want to learn JavaScript. That's the de facto language currently that front end developers use. But for example, if you want to work on the back end, there are many options out there. Ruby, TypeScript, C Sharp, Python. My suggestion is to learn what you want to learn. Learn what you find interesting. It's incredibly more important to find a passion for becoming a developer and learning things that you find interesting, not what someone else finds interesting. Web development, in my opinion, is one of the coolest subjects out there because it's one of the only things that I can think of that you can learn everything from the comfort of your own home with a cheap computer and an internet connection. And you can learn all of these things and build up all of these skills to find a full-time job.
create small projects to understand how something works, tinker around with open source projects and contribute to them, watch some videos on YouTube and Treehouse, just learn how you want to learn. There isn't a predefined path here. Now I'm gonna link some resources down in the description box below of resources that I've used in the past and that I did find helpful. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything in there. I'm sure there are a lot of other developers out there that can help you out as well. If you're a new developer trying to get into the field for the very first time, the most important thing that you can do at least in my opinion, is to create personal projects and build up your own little portfolio that you can include with your application to prospective employers. In other words, create a portfolio of things that you're proud of and include it as part of your job applications. Ultimately, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, the three most important things I think you can have as someone who wants to become a developer is a strong willingness to learn, a passion for problem solving, and a really good work ethic. With all of those qualities and a promise to yourself that you'll continue to always try and improve your skills, anyone can do it. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't. Just believe in yourself. As tacky as it sounds, believe in yourself and you can make it. That's all I have for this one, guys. Uh, I'm not sure how people are gonna take this video. Uh, this is different for me, as I said, and um, I, please be kind. It's the first time I'm trying to do something pretty casual like this. So if you did like this video, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing. It really does help me out, especially for this video, if there are enough likes and there is, an, is enough engagement on it and I can tell that people really like this sort of thing. I'll try and start a semi-regular thing like this where I can talk about development and tips for new developers and so on. If you're still here, please drop me a fire emoji in the comments below, just so I know that you stuck around until the end of the video. If you wanna follow me more on the regular, you can follow me over on Instagram at 2 Byte Thomas. There's more tech desk setup and gaming content planned soon, so please stick around for that. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.